you're rich and you want to avoid paying tax, you can move yourself or your business abroad. There is one thing, of course, that is very hard to move abroad. Your house. Which is why there's now growing pressure for a so-called mansions tax on expensive property. Here in London's Mayfair, there should be scope for quite a haul for the Chancellor. Even a rather modest looking place down this street has been on the market for £20 million. That's right, £20 million. Here we go, Nick. We've arrived. Looks very different inside from it. It does. Estate agent Liam Bailey gave me a tour. Um, open plan, ready to move into. In this market, really, uh, the buyers for this type of property, what they're looking for is a property which is absolutely finished before they move in. So almost like having a hotel room, you sort of come in and you can use it. Exactly right. Some say that a tax on expensive property offers a way of getting the very rich to stump up more. And there's another argument too. It turns out that the people who can afford places like this can pay a lot less tax on their purchases than most ordinary mortals. If I was buying this, uh, stamp duty would be a bit of a worry if I even had the money. Well, it'd be 5%, uh, so you'd be paying a million pounds in stamp duty. And can I avoid that? Uh, you could buy potentially through a, uh, an offshore company structure, uh, and effectively you'd be paying half a percent. So I'm saving... £900,000. Rich foreign buyers can also escape having to pay capital gains tax when they sell up. And council tax isn't much of a worry either. Well, this would be banded, band H, the top band, uh, so you'd be paying the maximum council tax uh, in the area. Which is the same for this 20 million or more house as it is for some £500,000 flat down the road. Could be. For politicians who see pitfalls in other taxes, raising money from expensive property may sound a surefire winner. But hold on, have you forgotten the fuss created by other property taxes? Like the rates? Would a property tax be an easy and uh, politically pain-free way of raising a large sum of money? There is an economic rationale for a property tax, beyond doubt. In my view, it would be political suicide for anybody to do it. The British are attached to housing. They see housing as a source of wealth. Of course, a lot of it is uh, inflation and is due to the scarcity of uh, housing. It's not productive wealth in, in that sense. But I think uh, a property tax would be political madness. I think that wealth and, and land taxes tend to be ones that are very popular with economists and they tend to be less popular with politicians. Uh, and, that, and that's because people often don't like the idea of being taxed on things that they have already purchased out of income which has been taxed. And of course, people don't like new taxes in general. The tighter the squeeze gets on us all, the more pressure government will be under to raise taxes on the sorts of people who can afford houses like this. And if they say, look, we're ready to move abroad, there'll be plenty of people who say, either good riddance or it's just an idle threat. But the dilemma that politicians will face is the same as we've seen before. If you want to really raise money on the rich, you'll end up hitting people who regard themselves as not rich at all. Which, of course, takes us back precisely to where we started. In this series, we've seen how politicians urged on by us have been spending more and more and more for decades. Now that the economic clouds have become darker, the sums no longer add up. We voters have begrudged giving politicians the extra tax needed to pay for it all. Do you resent sometimes your taxes going from you to someone else? I've resented it all my life, yeah. The rich don't want to pay more. So many of my friends and acquaintances have done tax planning by leaving the country. And the rest of us seem to think we pay quite enough already. I have to try quite hard to make ends meet. And when politicians try other wheezes to raise tax, they get into trouble. 
it's as clear as mud, isn't it? It really, really is. They say they simply can't win. If someone can think of a popular tax, uh, then you know they should phone up and let us know, uh, because uh, it isn't obvious there is one. But curiously, the current economic crisis may force us to confront head-on our troubles with tax. Governments keep on changing and tweaking the existing system, creating things that are more and more complex and irrational. Perhaps, you know, once, twice, three times in every century, there is a fundamental opportunity to do something more radical, to clear away all the debris that's built up from decades of incremental government policy. But if we don't make some of these big changes now, the opportunity to do so again may not come for another 20, 30 years. For years, any politician living on this street who's dared to admit they might need to tax us a bit more and spend a little bit less has found themselves punished. No wonder, then, that whether they're Labour or Conservative, they've tended to pretend that they can spend more and more and yet tax less and less. If there's one advantage of the current economic crisis, perhaps it's this, that we can have a more grown-up debate about your money and how they spend it.